Great Scott, Adam Scott here. Nintendo is shutting down the eShop for the 3DS. This means the only way to get new games is physically. Today I've got for you 12 amazing games you should add to your library before those prices go up. Let's take a look. The 3DS is an absolute Zelda machine. Ocarina of Time is arguably one of the best games ever made, and the 3DS is home to an excellent remake. Ocarina of Time 3D was one of the only things to play on the 3DS for the first six months of the platform's life. Not only is this a great game, but the remake makes a ton of great improvements and is far from a simple port. This includes more polished graphics, subtly reworked dungeons, and improved controls, which make for an altogether more streamlined experience. At its core, it's still the exact same amazing game. Another beautiful remaster and another one of the greatest games ever made is the classic N64's Majora's Mask. This is a must-buy for any fan. Unlike the more standard adventure of Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask revolves around you repeating the same three days, uncovering new things each time in order to prevent the moon from crashing into the world. Many time loop games released even this year don't execute this concept as well as Majora's Mask. It's much darker than your average Zelda game, and your abilities revolve around using different masks to gain powers, rather than finding new items. The 3DS updates make traversing time far easier to manage, with your bomber's notebook having loads more detail on what you've done so far. Bosses and masks have also been updated to make this the ultimate Majora's Mask experience. The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds takes the cake as one of the best games on the 3DS, period. It takes advantage of the No Glasses 3D in the best ways, making it one of the games I'd actually recommend you play with the 3D on for as long as your eyes are comfortable. Of course, every Zelda game is great, but as with everything, some are better than others. Into the heart of the storm to find you. While the 3DS didn't have a ton of horror games, it has a few real standouts that can scare the heck out of you even on the small screen. One of my favorite franchises ever is Resident Evil. However, it did start to lose its way while leaning too hard into action. Resident Evil Revelations released between Resi 5 and Resi 6 and feels like both the series progression and a return to the franchise staples. There's a ton of content and game styles, an evolved control system, and a unique setting, mostly on an abandoned cruise ship. The title is super impressive, and the definitive mature title on the 3DS, with production values worthy of a home console release, which actually arrived later. There are some downsides though including difficulty spikes and frame rate drops that are occasionally jarring in contrast with the rest of the title. All the same, Revelations has something to offer Resi fans old and new. There are few experiences on the 3DS more engrossing or exciting. We should go and see if we can find any other exits. Maybe there's a vent or a disposal chute or something. Zero Escape place. Virtue's Last Reward is equal parts horror, puzzle, and point-and-click adventure game, with a narrative that's as strange and funny as it is dark and unsettling. This is described as a visual novel, which is pretty fitting since you'll be spending just as much time clicking through the game's text as you will playing through its puzzles and clicking around its various rooms. There are 24 endings, and any of the characters can die. You'll have the freedom to jump around between different timelines to craft the best story for you. If you're into Japanese horror games, you've more than likely heard of Corpse Party. This famous title centers on a group of students who've become trapped in an alternate reality version of an old demolished elementary school haunted by evil spirits. 
you wander the school playing as different characters throughout various chapters, trying to find a way out while avoiding the tons of terrible and bloody endings on your way to salvation. It's a cult hit and more than worth your time if you've never played it. the massive Monster Hunter games could actually fit on the 3DS, but we didn't just get one game either. There's several to choose from. Monster Hunter Stories is the best entry to the series that you could ask for. It's the kind of game for anyone who's interested in trying Monster Hunter, but has been intimidated by the vastness and the quirks. While Monster Hunter Stories is vast, it's broken up into distinct areas that hold your hand in the best way possible. It feels like the game that would be made if Monster Hunter and Pokemon had a baby, or an egg. You add monsters to your party by finding eggs, hatching them, and raising the little creatures that pop out of them. And of course, you could use them to fight off bigger monsters as you roam the lands trying to save the world again. The story is great, the gameplay is simple enough to pick up thanks to its brilliant rock, paper, scissors battle style, and the cutscenes are particularly amazing too, especially by 3DS standards. The 3DS release of Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate allows hunters to invest countless hours in another adventure to conquer hundreds of quests. It's an excellent interpretation of a home console experience, although with occasional moments where its smaller experience isn't entirely optimized. The absence of online play is also a shame. However, it's still quite impressive and a must play for fans of the franchise who want to always be able to slay an almighty monster while on the go. Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate is the kind of game that takes a few hours for you to get into step with its ideas. It's the kind of game that with a few friends suddenly reveals new systems, tactics, and techniques. It's the kind of game that 200 hours in, you still can't stop playing because there's always new armor, new monster variants, new challenges to grab. It's the kind of game that could become your favorite game of all time. In 4 Ultimate, Monster Hunter's unfathomably deep mechanics, beautiful idiosyncrasies, and awesome hard-earned loot were combined with the series' best storyline. It's almost the perfect game. The best way to stop a bad guy with a gun is to shoot everyone and let God sort them out. Or I think that's how it goes. The 3DS has some awesome games where you settle your differences with bullets. Metroid Samus Returns is a remake of the Game Boy game Metroid 2 Return of Samus. Taking advantage of the circle pad on the system, Samus can now aim and shoot in full 360 degrees. The new melee attack brings an element of strategy to combat, and it's overall a great game for Metroid fans. Unfortunately, it was released after the debut of the Nintendo Switch, which means that not many people got to experience this great title. Its low print run means that it's likely to rise in price. So, if you're looking for another great handheld Metroid game to experience after playing Metroid Dread, you should pick this one up soon. After Star Fox 64, subsequent entries in the series have had interesting elements and plenty of great moments, but none have quite captured the magic we fell in love with back in 97. Fortunately, the 3DS remaster reminded everyone just how good it can be, with really solid use of the 3D added for good measure. Of course, I missed the chunky rumble pack and the N64's peculiar pad, but Star Fox 64 3D is arguably the best way to find out why I still get a tiny smile every time someone cracks out the old do a barrel roll. Humans are taking a beating. They need our help. Normally I'd agree with you, but... What is it? Do you remember how long the power of flight lasts? 
After over 25 years, Masahiro Sakurai, the main driving force behind games like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, followed through with his vision to bring back the Kid Icarus franchise, which hadn't seen any love since the NES days. The game evolved from a vertically scrolling platformer to a third-person shooter featuring on-rails shooter elements. Though the game's content was received well, the controls ended up being a bit controversial. Big box versions of the game actually came with a stand for your system since one of the control schemes heavily implemented the use of the stylus for aiming. Of course, those who became accustomed to the controls swear by it, and it's highly recommended by fans of the game. The Kid Icarus series hasn't seen a sequel since though, so if you're a big fan of Pit and Friends, I'd recommend you get this now. The Terabot is both armor and weapon, even jumping into packs like Punch. Okay, so those are my thoughts. I'd love to hear yours. What 3DS games are you picking up? What games did I miss that I should add to a part two? And what games do you wish you would have gotten, but now the prices are just too high? Love to hear about it in the comments. If you like the video, give it a like. And if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. All right, till next time.